Hello and welcome to Gall's All Access. I'm your host, Andy Zilch. Chris Spar is in his first season as the San Diego Gall's assistant coach. Prior to joining the Gall's, Spar played nine professional seasons before beginning his coaching career. Spar has previously coached in the Ontario Hockey League and the German Elite League. I sat down with Chris to learn more about the new assistant coach for the San Diego Gulls. Well, welcome to the show, assistant coach Chris Spar. Thanks a lot for joining us. And uh, we want to start with your background in early, early ages. I, I know you got an older brother, but how were you introduced to hockey? Was it through him or was it just the madness of being in uh, Toronto and, of course, the hockey craze city? Yeah, I, I think, you know, I, I think it's kind of a mix of of both really you know I, I have uh, one older brother like you like you mentioned and I kind of did really whatever he did growing up right kind of following him around the house and uh, I'd imagine the first time he picked up a hockey stick I was right behind him with one as well. Now I, I have to ask this question because I've gotten different answers from players and coaches that grew up in a city. Were you a fan of the Leafs and, and, and what was your player that you admired the most? When you're in Toronto, you you almost have to be a fan of the Leafs, right? Because everywhere you look, there's this like blue and white. It certainly was cheering for them growing up. My, my favorite player would have been Doug Gilmore. So, you know, watching him and growing up and he was kind of my, my favorite player. And yeah, the Leafs uh, they haven't had a lot of success since I've been alive. So, uh, but it's, uh, you know, it's always been kind of my favorite team until I came here. Uh, what other kind of influences did you have to continue your hockey career and, and move on to the OHL and then pro hockey? I had a few influences for sure. You have a brother who's two years older than you. You know, he's playing at a, a similar level or, or a little bit higher. And so he was, he was a guy that I really looked up to. And, you know, we trained together in the summer. Um, you know, we pretty much did, you know, everything together in terms of on ice and off ice. And so really, I would say in terms of the, the mentorship and, and the guy that I watched, it was probably him the most. Yeah, I noticed your very first year you played with your brother, right? Overseas? Correct. Was that a, a massive decision to go over? Overseas, what, what else was involved in that process? Ironically enough, at that time, um, you know, we found out um, that we were able to obtain ger German citizenship. Uh, what that did is it allowed us to go to play in, in Germany without uh, utilizing an import spot. So we were, we were pretty valuable players to, to be able to go over there. And um, it also gave me an opportunity to potentially, you know, play on the German national team. And, uh, you know, at that point in time, you know, we decided that's probably the best option in terms of career-wise. Went over there and stayed over there for quite a while. What is the, the hockey experience like over there? I've heard the German Elite League is pretty rambunctious uh, group of fans. Yeah, they're, those crowds are, they're, they're big and they're loud and they cheer the whole game. And so a little bit different than, you know, in, in North America where, um, you know, there's a lot of cheering for specific things, a goal or a fight. They're just cheering the whole game and singing songs. And uh, it's pretty incredible to see you know that many people you know unified together singing and singing one song you know and they're singing it for an hour you know <laughs> and it's like do people ever get tired uh, like we're, we're on the bench from like and they're still going in the third period and they actually get louder as the game goes on so which is uh, it's it's unique but it's it's one of the best parts of playing over there well you spent quite a long time in germany and i i'd like to talk about those experiences too i mean it's quite a different culture than what we have over here in the States, but I'd just like to hear you firsthand on, on things that maybe took you aback when you first went over there and the things that you liked. You know, it's, it's such a beautiful place to live. Um, you're so close to other countries, um, you know, which is, you know, unusual you know, for a kid coming from Canada where you have to jump on a, you can jump on a flight for five hours and still be in Canada. And, you know, when you're in, when you're in Europe, you're a train ride away from a different country, a different uh, speaking language. So There's nothing to just, you know, jump on a, a train from Germany and head over to Amsterdam, you know, for instance, which would be, you know, a two hour train ride, which is a whole different culture, a different language, different cuisine. Um, and uh, yeah, that's the real nice part about being in Europe. So it was really neat to be able to go over there and, and, and see a bunch of new things that were uh, just, just beautiful, really. And um, you know, my wife was able to come over with me and spend a lot of time there. And we got to do a lot of things that you know, some people will never get to do in their lifetime. We're very thankful for that. The Gulls recently held a ceremonial puck drop in celebration of hockey legend and pioneer Willie O'Ree as he was presented with a county proclamation declaring November 19th Willie O'Ree Day throughout San Diego County. Willie O'Ree dropping the puck here at the Pachanga Arena. Always great 
to see a magnificent man in the building. And the coolest guy in the building. Let me tell you, you get a chance <laughs> to talk to Willie O'Ree. Yes. San Diego County Supervisor Joel Anderson and Gall's President of Business Operations Matt Savant presented O'Ree with the award before the game. O'Ree was honored not only for his incredible contributions as a valued member of the San Diego community, but for his influential legacy throughout the sport of ice hockey. In 1958, O'Ree broke the hockey color barrier and became the first black player to play in the National Hockey League. Willie played 407 games over seven seasons with the San Diego Gulls, winning the scoring title in the 1968-69 season. November 19th will forever be Willie O'Ree Day. We recently had a unique opportunity to join the Gauls at their practice facility in Poway. We also mic'd up Gauls forward Rocco Grimaldi. We got him, Danny! Yeah! Let's go! Woo! Yeah, Danny! I scored, yep. Yeah. 1-1. One, one. This is a good one if you get it. Which I'm not. Yes, I am. Yes, let's go. Yes, you're not. Let's go. Oh, you get the shoot, are you kidding me? No, no! Are you kidding me? Can you just cut that guy so you can shoot? That's unbelievable. That's a, sus that's a suspension. Let's go! Come on! You score? Yes! Yes! 2-1-0, let's go. I'm starting good. I need a score to keep the pressure on here. Oh, you lucky dog! Oh my gosh, Danny. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, see ya. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, see ya. What? Oh my god! Come on, booger. No, I'm not, not, you're not booger. The guy in the booger jersey is. Hey, you got a meeting with the coach. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's right. Just start back to back. <laughs> start back to back. Oh. Yes! Yeah, period! Yes! Let's go, Danny. That was go. nasty. There's no way you can grow hair though. Look at that clean face. I had a mustache like maybe one, maybe two years. Like my first year pro, I think I did it. Gross. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go! Just blows them up. <laughs> oh, you want to pick me at the blue? Okay, I'll take your head off. <laughs> Bro, he got airborne. I was dying. Like. I don't know, I beat them, I don't care about you guys. I beat those two clowns. Coming up, we recap a very special night with the Gauls at the Rady Children's Ice Rink at Liberty Station, right here on Gauls All Access, presented by California Coast Credit Union. Give the gift of Gauls Hockey when you purchase the Holiday Pack. Starting at $108, you'll get four flex tickets to use for any Gauls home game, a Blue Line Blondale t-shirt, and a third jersey hat. Purchase before December 25th and get two free tickets to Disco Night on January 28th. Purchase now at sandiegogalls.com slash holiday pack. Welcome back. The Gauls are proud to sponsor the Rady Children's Ice Rink at Liberty Station. Now in its 26th year, the ice rink benefits the thriving after cancer program at the Peckham Center for Cancer and Blood Disorder at Rady Children's Hospital. The whole team came out for Gulls Night as the team skated with fans and signed autographs. Here's a recap of the special evening.
Brady Children's Hospital is one of our closest community partners. Um, so we we're excited to partner with them again and make a gift of $35,000 to support the Rady Rink. Um, and we're just excited to share our passion for ice skating with Southern California and hopefully be a small part of people's family traditions. Yeah, it's pretty awesome to be doing this in December. And I mean, we got a pretty good turnout here tonight, so it's awesome. so much fun for both the fans and the players because it's the first time we've been able to bring the entire team out since the pandemic started. Um, so it's just a good opportunity for everybody to interact with the players and have the opportunity for players to thank fans for sticking with them through the pandemic and really cheering them on through a difficult time. COVID obviously threw a damper on being with the fans, interacting with them, even having them at our games. So being out here and interacting with them, signing autographs, taking photos, it's pretty cool. Brady Children's Hospital and our fans are such an important part of the Goals family. We really couldn't imagine celebrating the holidays without them. Now a recap of the Goals' recent community events. The Gulls front office staff joined the Armed Services of San Diego in September for their food distribution event. The team built care packages for local military members and helped distribute the ready-made meal kits. The event kicked off what the team expects will be a busy year of community service in the local San Diego community. The Gulls hosted a street hockey clinic for children of military families at Liberty Station. The clinic was an opportunity to teach participants street hockey and give them the opportunity to interact with select Gulls players and coaches. The Gulls and the USO San Diego are working together to provide military members and their families with special experiences through the sport of hockey. It's a good time. You know, anytime you can do stuff for the USO, it's, uh, it's a feather in everyone's cap. I thought the kids got a lot out of it. They had a lot of fun. They burned a lot of energy, so they'll sleep good tonight. In October, the Ronald McDonald House Charities of San Diego invited some of the Gulls players to participate in some Halloween festivities. Players were able to participate in craft activities and games with the families as well as hand out some of the candy and Gulls gear. It was a great opportunity to brighten the day of children and families going through a difficult time. It feels great to see uh, making some of the kids day and just letting them play hockey, play basketball, kind of seeing how much fun they're, fun they're having really warms your heart and it, it makes you feel good. It's great. Like you, as a player, you really don't know if like people look up to you and stuff. It's like it's awesome to meet them and just hang out and have fun. It's great. The San Diego Gulls Foundation recently teamed up with I Love a Clean San Diego for the 38th annual Coast Cleanup Day. Gulliver and the Gulls girls walked the Cardiff State Beach in Encinitas, removing litter and debris in a successful day of coastal cleanup. Coming up, we'll have part two of our sit down with Coach Spar, right here on Gulls All Access, presented by California Coast Credit Union. Treat your family to San Diego Gulls hockey with the Family Four Pack. The pack is available every Saturday and Sunday home game and includes four tickets, four hot dogs, and four sodas, starting at $129. Purchase your Family Four Pack at SanDiegoGulls.com slash family. Now Coach Barr takes you on the bench for a game in this week's edition of Gauls Mic'd Up. Let's play fast tonight boys, play fast. Play hard, whistle the whistle, play hard, whistle the whistle. Here we go, right there, right there. Jam them up, there we go. All right, go, go. As soon as we break pressure, let's go. Win it, win it, win it. That's it Kirk, that's it Kirk. Hey, that all starts with a big win. That starts with a big win there. Good job. Play. That's a great play. Hey, nice shot there. That's it. All right, we got time. Now let's find a play. That's it, Helly. Come on, Wears. That's it. That's it, Mux. That's it, Mux. Good win. Yeah, finish it. That's a great shift again by those guys. That's it. Hard on it. Hard on it. That's it, boys. These guys are going. These guys are going. Yeah. Put it there. Oh, nice try, Jersey. Hey, that's it, boys. That's it. Good speed. Great block. Great block. That's it. 
Hey, do you, do you feel the difference there? Like, you had time, space, make a play? You know what I mean? Like, so. that's a great play. Just have a shoulder check, right? Have a look, you might be there. Get back to a simple game here, fellas. Get back to a simple game. That's when you guys are at your best. Yeah, let's go. Get up! Okay, let's win this back. Win this back, go! Move, move, move. Good job, fellas, good job. Here we go. Way to come across there, Rocco, that's it. Hey, that's a good out there. And now part two of our sit down interview with Chris Barr. All right, let's go, let's go, let's go. Get up, get up. The kill, boys, get kill. Oh. oh, that's all he was saying, right? You get that puck on the wall. Good play to get it in. Yeah, good, good, good. As you, you moved along through your career in Germany, when did you decide it's time time to hang them up? I, I think I'm done here playing. Yeah, that was a difficult situation. So I was uh, I was 29 years old, and I, I'd, I'd flown over to Germany for what would have been the eighth time. And uh, I got off there and, and basically got into training camp and started noticing some swelling in my arm. And I, I ran into a situation where I had some blood clots in, in, my, uh, in my shoulder. And, uh, you know, just talking to the doctors, and, and they said, you know, you can continue to play for sure, but you're always going to be at a, a slight risk to, to get one again. You know, I had some tough injuries that year. I got cut a skate blade in my face. Um, and so these, these injuries started to pile up and um, had an opportunity to interview for a coaching job, which at that time I had, I had thought about it towards the end of my career, but I wasn't really keen on it. I still wanted to play. Opportunity came up. It was close to home, and you know, it, ultimately, I, I felt like it would be better to to be a young coach than an older player, and that was really the decision. And I was very fortunate that the you know the Niagara Ice Dogs organization gave me that chance. Well, uh, now you get your opportunity here to come back over to the states. You coached in the OHL for one season, then you jump here to San Diego. Now that you're settled in in the American Hockey League and in the city of San Diego. What's been your thoughts on the city, first of all? You know, me coming from Toronto, there's like, you know, I call back home and it's minus 10 right now. So for my, you know, my dad will say, what are you up to? And I'm like, I don't even want to tell him. I'm, like, I'm sitting on my patio right now, actually, and it's 20 degrees. But obviously a fantastic city, so many different parts of the city. You know, like my mom came to visit a couple weeks ago and I, I don't even think I showed her everything, you know, from the downtown to the beach towns. Yeah, it's just a great city great people it's uh you know and then to be able to be a part of this organization has just been uh it's just it's been outstanding how has the experience been working under roy sommer who has 30 years of experience for me as a young coach like i'm 35 years old and here i am i get a chance to work with a guy who's at over 800 wins in this league from right from the start it's just been eye-opening and, and being able to um, you know, pick his brain and learn from him. I feel like I should just write things down every day, uh, you know, and, and start a journal. And, and to, to be honest with you, I've actually done some of that. Um, but yeah, he's a, he's a great guy. He, he, and you know, the best thing about Roy is he treats people really well. You know, a lot of, a lot of times um, people that have that much success and you know, they, they're not as humble and Roy's a humble guy and he's, you know, he's just, he treats you, treats you well and, and you, learn, you learn a lot from him at the same time. As you coach players here in yeah. the American Hockey League, what kind of coach do you want to be known for and, and how do you want to carry yourself amongst the players when they, when they leave San Diego and, and they go back and reflect on being instructed by Chris Barr? I, I would certainly consider myself like a, a collaborative coach. I'm not so much of a dictator where you know I come in and say, this is the way it's got to be. It's like, hey, let's work together on this. And here's an area of your game where I think we can, uh, we can improve. Do you agree? And what I think is when you get people on board and, and make it feel like, it's, uh, like you're in this together, there's, uh, you know, there's a sense of like them taking charge of their own development. And uh, I think if, if you were to ask our, our players and what I would want them to you know, remember me as or how I coach as someone that cares about them, not just as a player, but as a person, and that uh, you know, we, we do things and we work on them together because we're both going for the same goal here. You know, like we're, we want to make you better, you want to be better, and so like, let's, let's do this together. Ahead of tomorrow's Teddy Bear Toss Night, we leave you with a little bit of history of how the tradition came about. My name is Andy Zilch for the cast and crew. Thanks for watching Gulls All Access. The first teddy bear toss in hockey history would take place on December 5th, 1993 in a game between Canadian Hockey League's Kamloops Blazers and the Portland Winterhawks. After the first goal by the home team, 
Fans were encouraged to throw teddy bears and stuffed animals onto the ice to later be distributed to local children's charities and foundations to spread joy and cheer during the holidays. If we put the idea together, I would have been happy with two to three hundred teddy bears. But look what happened. Instead of 300, they got 2,300. It was there that a unique hockey tradition was born. The tradition caught on in the U.S. and even introduced in Australia, Sweden, and the United Kingdom. It's Teddy Bear Cast time! Here they come! It's raining stuffed animals in Chocolate Town! Nowhere has the teddy bear toss been more embraced than that at the home of the AHL's Hershey Bears, who last year set a record with 52,341 stuffed furry friends tossed onto their ice. It scores! Sweet, cuddly mayhem! It's teddy bear toss time! Thank you very much. Comes back to Chocolate Town and makes tens of thousands of teddy bears fly onto the ice. Furry creatures of all shapes and sizes. Over the past 29 years, more than a million stuffed animals have been thrown onto the ice of hockey rinks across the world and donated in the name of holiday cheer and the spirit of giving. And that's where you come in as America's finest fans. Bring your bears and keep the tradition going. The San Diego Gulls will host the 2022 Teddy Bear Toss tomorrow night at the Pechanga Arena at 7 p.m. See you there with your teddy bears ready to toss after the first Gulls goal tomorrow night.